So if you haven't watched part one, I would suggest you do as it is a two part video. Uh, in this one, I will be talking about my uh, opinions on the subclasses in PvP. And yep, the, the link to part one will be in the description. So, Hunter. Uh, may come as a slightly hot take, but Hunter is currently the worst class in the game for PvP. This is due to being mainly a gunplay focus class and therefore not having access to the potent abilities that other classes do. As such, I believe it's been on a steady decline. And to start off well in Witch Queen with invisibility and Omni being the meta pick due to you basically being unkillable. So long as you were invisible, of course. Then in Haunted, we got Classy Restoration as a mod, which excelled on Hunter due to the low class ability cooldown. But it also came with a nerf to Stompies with the addition of AE, so now you have negative 50 AE whenever you have them equipped. Hunter is where I would argue Hunter started to fall off, as both Ark, Titan, and Warlock were amazing, and Hunter was less so. Then in Seraph and Lightfall it made it so you could actually shoot in the air so long as you had enough AE and also made a bunch of ability changes, mainly buffs to Warlock and certain Aye. fragments changes and cooldown timers which mainly ended up affecting Hunter out of all the classes. As on Hunter you don't really have the liberty to focus into ability regen without sacrificing one of your main stats. They also made another nerf to Stompies by making it so instead of having negative 50 AE, you now completely lose the benefits of the exotic by dodging. Which in my personal opinion is basically the equivalent of firing a nuclear bomb at a growth site. Now I'm not exactly saying the Hunter is absolutely awful, but it does just kind of get outclassed and the only reason it's been able to keep up is mainly due to having certain overpowered exotics that rotate every few seasons or so, which we are also basically running out of. Currently we basically only have one option in the OP exotic department, which is Ryunga Hamkara's Spine. You could also run Strand Hunter, but I don't personally think that is very viable in a 3v3 game mode. Now, I don't think that Hunter needs a buffs exactly, but when your only option of actually keeping up is the one subclass that actually allows you to be mobile on the mobility class and an exotic that gives you tons of grenade energy from hitting things with abilities, makes that grenade capable of nearly one-shotting anything within its blast radius, whilst also increasing its blast radius and makes it so set grenade, which is a trip mine, has 100 HP. I think there might be a slight problem with not only that exotic but also the other classes in general. Next up we have Warlock, which is basically just a better hunter at this point, on arc you have Lightning Surge and Arc Souls. The Lightning Surge melee is incredibly powerful and used to be capable of one-shotting enemies, but now will still deal a large chunk of the health, whilst also having pretty good crowd control. And then you have Arc Souls, which are just generally nice for extra damage, letting you just kill people quicker. On Void, all three aspects are actually pretty good, but the main two are Chaos Accelerants, as the different grenades are all pretty good. You'll generally be seeing people use Vortex Grenades as they will suck people in from a larger distance and deal a tiny bit more damage. And there's Void Soul, which is said in the previous video will weaken, slow, damage, basically ping enemies, and will also fly directly into them. Void Soul generally excels in 3v3 game modes, and I cannot tell you how many times I've died for Trials match because someone shot me or a teammate once, and then lost the round. You likely won't notice it much, but the enemy team will. On solo now, all three aspects are again good, but the main two are Icarus Dash and He Rises. Icarus is an obvious choice due to the mobility of Grants, and He Rises gives you a passive 20 AE bonus, so you can just run Ophids and add an Icarus Grip mod for an overall 45 AE bonus, which should let you shoot in the air fairly accurately with a majority of weapons. If you don't care about the AE bonus, you could also use Touch of Flame for the better grenades. My recommendations would be fusion grenades, although some people do like using firebolts still. Now when it comes to supers, Warlock really only has Wall of Radiance and Nova Bomb as the general good options, 
but it's a general ability play makeup for the lack of good supers. Well, the reason Warlock is just better Hunter is as simple as it just doing most of what Hunter does but better on a lower cooldown. If you want a crowd control super, you have Nova Bomb and the entire subclass is basically dedicated to crowd control. If you want some mobility, you, you can run Solar Warlock and Icarus Dash to move around the map twice as fast as a hunter could ever wish to go, even with old stompies. You also want to shoot in the air, just use heroes as amphibians. The only thing you don't really have on Warlock is the double jump and slightly better supers, but your general abilities again make up for the lack of supers, and double jump isn't really as useful anymore due to the lack of AE on Hunter. Next up is Titan, which as a whole is just stupid. And to prove that, I will now show a montage of all my recorded deaths to Titans this week. Over, Titan is the most busted and dumb subclass in the game. First, before I complain about Arc and Void, I would like to talk about Solar Titan, the balanced subclass. Because it didn't get anything new other than a nice melee and the ability to freely use sunspots, Solar Titan basically stayed as powerful as it was before in PvP, and I think that's actually pretty balanced and fun with the new melee. So, you know, good, good job, good, good job, Bungie. Next up is Void Titan, which is basically built around camping in one spot forever and is significantly less balanced and more annoying to go against. Your barricade will instantly give everyone near you an overshield and will also regenerate said overshield so long as you are nearby. The overshields actually matter in PvP as you will end up taking extra shots or free to kill. Your Void Shoulder Charge can not only stop abilities but supers if you're good enough for baiting them, and then there is Bubble, which I didn't mention in the Warlock section as I wanted to complain about defensive supers here. They don't work in Destiny, you either have to make them easy to take out, in which case they become useless, or you have to make them invulnerable, in which case they become way too powerful. Both fall further into the invulnerability side in 3v3 modes, unless you have one of the many supers on screen right now. And almost all of them have a longer cooldown than both Whirl and Bubble, and as such they become very difficult to take out without the use of gimmick weapons or team shooting. Personally, I would make it impossible to get the Whirl and Bubble, or at least make it take a significant amount of time, like only if you manage to get into a 4-4 round situation in order to get your super in objective modes, or just PvP in general. Anyway, now that's over, let's get on to the one thing they hate more than Void Titans. Arc Titan. Every single part of Arc Titan is overtuned or just annoying. Starting off the supers. 
Fist of Havoc is probably one of the two, maybe three things I wouldn't call overtuned or annoying, mainly due to never seeing it. But Fist of Havoc in general is pretty easy to take out so long as you're paying attention. Wonder Crash, however, is the easiest and no brain super to use in the game. You fly at people at speeds, which makes you generally pretty unkillable to anything other than abilities or blast damage weapons, and have a very short cast animation that you are meant to kill the Thunder Crash during. But it doesn't matter since the Titan would just pop it behind cover or a barricade and instantly direct itself into your cranium before you've even had a chance to shoot back. And you might be wondering, oh, what if I managed to actually avoid the missile coming directly for me? Well, the blast radius is absolutely huge and would do 4 damage unless you were quite literally on the very edge of it. Which means unless the Titan using said super lacks all of its brain cells, you are going to die. Now, oh, that's a super, you know, it's meant to be powerful. Surely for a super that good, they must have sacrificed elsewhere on the subclass, right? No. No, 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 they didn't. Not at all. No. The most tame aspect is probably Touch of Thunder, which used to make your stun grenade absolutely ridiculous and become a Stasis Hunter's Tornado which actually deals damage. You also used to be able to use Heart of Immus Light to not only decrease the cooldown, but also increase the damage of it more, just, just cuz. It also decreased every other ability, meaning you could have near PvE ability spam in PvP. Again, it, just, just because, you know, why not? Now most people tend to use lightning grenades because Touch of Thunder grants you two of them and also makes them jolt, making anything hit by them very easy to kill if they don't just die to the grenade on its own. Next up is Juggernaut. Now remember how last video I said I only have 50 HP? Now, that wouldn't be so bad if it actually works correctly. Instead of having 50 HP and then remaining damage going to the Titan itself, if you deal more than 50 damage it all goes into the shield. You can snipe or shock on a Jock Titan and you'll basically have just wasted a shot. Which you know wouldn't be so bad, I guess you can just shoot them whilst running at you. Surely it takes a while for the shield to fully come up and it also only comes up while sprinting. Well, dear viewer, it comes up almost instantly and you can use Antaeus Wards with it to give you a shield whilst sliding, which will block all damage and reflect it back at your opponent. And whilst, yes, Juggernaut is tied to your barricade, you can massively reduce your barricade cooldown very easily. Next up is Knockouts, otherwise known as who the hell at Bungie thought this was actually okay to put in the game. Knockouts will increase your melee damage and range just for punching someone, and makes you start health regen for killing them. Which again doesn't sound that bad, but it is! In most situations the damage increase isn't too bad, it goes up to about 150 per melee, so if you're slightly weak you'll die, although that usually happens in melee fights. The main reason comes from the health regen and range. Health regen is agony because most of the time you'll be able to pretty easily chain melee fights back to back and usually win, as usually your health will have regenerated enough to be able to take two melees by the time you find someone. You'll also most of the time be able to melee first due to the slightly higher range, which said range can completely destroy the netcode at times. You can essentially just start jumping whilst meleeing to start teleporting around, making you essentially unkillable in most melee fights. And finally we have the Arc Titan melee abilities. First is Ballistic Slam, which isn't actually that bad, just being a 100 AoE damage mini Thunder Crash, where you can jump in the air after sprinting and diagonally slam down on people. Then there's Thunder Clap, which can be annoying in the right situation, such as camping behind a wall or barricade, as when charged up enough, Thunder Clap is capable of one-shooting players, but generally won't be that much of a nuisance to you. The real issue is Shoulder Charge, a melee which has nice mobility despite being nerfed, so you lose ability energy whenever you use it instead of just hitting someone, and it also lets you slam into people dealing I think 120 damage and blinding whoever you hit. So they have basically no chance of fighting back. Thank you Bungie, very cool. And now that's over, I would like to mention that I would kind of like Arctian to be removed forever and never return, as it is a stain on existence and actively makes me upset whenever I find out it exists. So much so that I would like every person who uses Arctian in PvP to also cease existing, as they are not cool people in my personal opinion. Anyway, that is all for Schizo content this week. Next week will be a State of Destiny 2 video, which is not just copying other YouTubers, I wanted to do one for basically a year. That video will be out whenever it is ready, so adios.